Hello, um, hope you had a nice break. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about fashion technology. Um, and you can go and find all sorts of wearables projects. I, I pointed before to smartwatches. This could be considered a wearable device if you have it on your body. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about what I think are some of the important trends and things that you might be interested in pursuing, uh, researching, and then developing for these areas. And I'll talk a little bit about that, this image in a minute. But let me, let me put this to present. So I found a couple of graphics online about what the areas of fashion tech that uh, are interesting might be. So knitting is one area. And the reason I put this here is because it's got a lot of companies that you can look into as well. And I will be sharing this link in Slack after I'm done with the presentation. I'll be talking about some of these companies. Um, AR and VR, IoT, uh, Internet of Things. I'm not necessarily talking too much about Internet of Things and AI. And then there is another one that I found. Uh, it's really interesting how you can find all sorts of different people have different ideas of what the technologies are. This was another one that I found was in relation to fashion that were interesting. And this is the 2020 outlook. So it's a little bit outdated, but again, IoT, Internet of Things. And that basically means that, um, for example, those smart fridges that connect to Instacart and when it knows that your milk is out, it orders milk for you, that would be considered Internet of Things. Uh, smart blinds, Alexa, Google, um, little Google Home thing, I think it's called, the Apple Home. Um, all those things can speak to each other. It's about everything being connected to the internet and being able to talk to each other. Now, of course, sometimes there's security issues with that. We're not gonna go into that, but thing, I think there was a big thing with ring doorbell or like those smart doorbells a few years back. Augmented reality, this might be placed into the same place as, um, into the same category as virtual reality or mixed reality. Sometimes it's called XR uh, because it touches upon different things. So that's something that's definitely been um, impl implemented more since the whole COVID. Uh, it's given a jump start to that. And I might even also add some gaming technology into that. And I'll show you a specific example of a company using gaming technology. Blockchain, um, you might know cryptocurrency uses some uh, blockchain, but blockchain can be used for a lot of different purposes. And I have a couple of examples of that. I don't have anything on 3D printing, but um, 3D printing has been around for so many years and it's just had this incredible um, uh, explosion once patents started going, um, started expiring and it became more uh, economical and plans were shared out by RepRap project as well as the Fab at Home project and MakerBot. So that really exploded. 3D printing, uh, there's industrial level print in 3D printing and manufacturing where there's like nanoscale 3D printing and metal printing and big printing where you can print houses. Um, in terms of fashion, I would probably say 3D knitting is more important than 3D printing right now. Um, but there is a lot of 3D printing. And, and if you want to know more about 3D printing, please ping me on, on, uh, on Slack. I can talk about it for days. Artificial intelligence, I skipped that one. Artificial intelligence, I've, I've grouped that with machine learning uh, as well. And I will be talking about that. That's the first thing I'll be talking about and giving you examples. Drones, I'm not talking about drones. Um, I'm not talking about robots. But robots, you would think, uh, I think I have one link in there about robots and advanced manufacturing in the reference links. But um, robots, I would tend to think that would be more uh, in, uh, sorry, I have my husband uh, just texted me or called me. 
Um, robots, I would consider them more in the industrial level for manufacturing purposes and automation. I think that small scale manufacturing, there will be quite a bit, there's a quite a bit of, of people trying to make sewing robots so that we don't necessarily have to have people sewing, that the robots actually do the sewing and they're using computer vision and artificial intelligence. And, you know, um, additive manufacturing technologies for putting that together. Um, I'm not really touching upon that, but there are companies out there working on that. And that could be something uh, used in a project. So artificial intelligence and machine learning, there's quite a bit of, of um, companies working out there. And what I've done here is instead of just presenting pictures, I've created my presentation in a way where there's all these links so that when you get the shared uh, presentation, you can go to those links as well. And you can go down the rabbit hole that is the internet on these. But I'm just gonna briefly touch upon them while I have time. So Facebook, um, this is 2018, so this is a little bit old, but they basically had an AI that they um, used they, uh, to, to try to be creative and uh, fashion was one of the um, areas that they explored. And these usually have, photo, they usually, usually also use machine learning and some data sets. Um, so I do have links to some of those data sets and pardon my Spark presentation. Amazon has also used quite a bit of technology for working with artificial intelligence and trying out outfits via artificial intelligence. Um, Style by Alexa is one of these projects. You can also, uh, so here's another one where you they designed a system for you to try on virtual clothing. And this one synthetically created looks for the users based on the images that they, they chose. So you had the query image, some reference garments, and the AI came up with a garment for them. It's kind of insane. There was a presentation at last year's Adobe Max conference that, um, that showed the same data set and I have the data set uh, here. So if you want to actually use machine learning, the data set paper is here and you can go to that. Um, and they basically, it, it was, I showed the, that presentation to my students and they were like, why are there, there my job's going to be obsolete. You know, AI is going to take over my, my design job. And it's, it's not true. We still need people. We still need designers. But it is really amazing what you can do with computational design. Um, the AI and fashion link gives you a, a nice report by Huri Tech. So I'll let you read that one on your own. Again, go to present. And I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Generative fashion, I thought this was interesting. Uh, again, using machine learning where they have certain uh, uh, data sets that they put in and then the computer goes in and uh, controls the texture, controls the shapes and creates different uh, silhouettes. And then I do have a video to show you in regards to this. So let me see if I can present and go down to that video. This has to do with algorithmic couture. I'm not gonna play the full video. I'm just gonna play a little bit of it for you. As the demand for clothing increases in relation to the growing population, the waste created in the fashion industry continues to grow. We are drowning in what we have made. The existing linear model created on the premise of mass production and consumption desperately calls for a change. Looking to a more sustainable future, we must reconsider the holistic cycle of fashion. Digital innovations have evolved the landscape of fashion. Ads are aggregated with spectrum consumption, and fashion trends are forecast and utilizing our data. There is a need to realign our incentives to more sustainable values by looking at how we design in fashion. By utilizing 3D scanning technology alongside CAD software, we are able to optimize garments to the unique body types of the user, independent from the credit boarding system. This service utilizes machine learning algorithms to generate an optimized modular pattern, allowing for the user to customize the form, material, and color to match their personal style. 
So I'll stop it right there. You can watch the video once I give you the link. Um, it's really interesting what you can do, even on a small boutique basis, if you have some really good coders uh, yeah, working with you. So that's, think about AI and uh, machine learning as one possible really disruptive way of uh, changing the fashion industry and textile industry. Virtual fashion is something that is absolutely insane. And I'm not going to necessarily go into too much, but this is a dress called iridescence. It was, it, it is based on blockchain technology and it's virtual fashion. The, fashion, the dress does not exist in reality. And it was sold for $9,500. Um, so this was a big, crazy uh, scandal when this happened a while back. I've given you the story in there, you can read more about it, but someone actually owns this virtual dress. Um, the company that worked on that was Fabricant. So I've given you the link to their website and you can see um, their website is very inspiring. You can see a lot of virtual fashion there. Um, digital is definitely a word that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. It's merging the physical and the digital. Again, this is considered digital couture, that dress I just showed you. Um, so you can you can look that as uh, look at that site for inspiration. Let me go back in and scroll back down. I don't know why it doesn't necessarily ever remember where I'm going. And I have three minutes, so I'm going to go quick. Obsess, this is experimental e-commerce platform. So another one that you might be interested in looking at. Other technologies that I think are um, pretty neat. I'm not going to go over the wearable, but I am going to go over the digital, which is basically combining the physical and digital. This was definitely something big when COVID has hit. Um, so big that fashion houses had to figure out how to incorporate a digital aspect to the runway shows. Balenciaga basically knocked it out of the park. They made a video game to showcase their garments. Uh, so you can actually go online and play their video game for their fashion collection. So this is super cool. I think this is where things are going. I, I think using real-time graphics, volumetric video, um, is something that is ripe for exploitation um, by advertising agencies and marketing. And it's just phenomenal that Balenciaga had the the gusto and the manpower and the funding to be able to do this. So I'll let that leave that there and go back and scroll down. Um, and I'm just trying to give you some inspiration, material innovation. So modern meadow, think of growing materials, think of alternative materials. This is something that kind of disrupting the industry. So instead of, you know, harvesting cotton, Picking the, you know, picking the cotton, processing it, dyeing it, all that stuff. What if you can just grow the cotton in the color by using biotechnology? So there are links there about modern meadows, which is really fantastic. Fake leather, grown leather, provenance bio as well. And then some other H&M uh, innovation winners that I thought were interesting I put in there. I've got one minute. Okay, circular design. So thinking again in that whole idea of... Um, sustainability of thinking more about uh, circular design is when you basically plan the product from the grown material from the where you harvest or source the materials all the way to the end of life, um, how you dispose of it or recycle it. Circular.fashion is a website that is trying to enable that. Blockchain technology can help this, um, tackling te textile waste and where sourcing and where materials go and their life. Um, this can also then be used for, uh, for tackling textile waste. There's another one here. God, I don't have enough time. Um, but I'm going to post this on there. You can ask me any question about anything on these things. I did want to talk knitting technologies. Linda and Paul and some of the other mentors are experts in knitting. I just gave you three little links here for that. Blockchain, I gave you a couple of links, one with uh, luxury, one case study, more links here, and then I sourced anything, uh, any text that I used. So 
I'm going to call it right now because I want you guys to be able to go to J.R. Campbell's session on team building because you need to find your, your peeps and your team. So ping me on Slack and happy hacking, guys. That'll start at 8. All right. Bye for now.